So I'm going to present to you a reading from the Oral Linda book about Jesus. It's a really fascinating story. And if you want to know more about the Oral Linda book, um, take a look at my community page. I have a lot that I have posted there and I am posting there all the time because that is what I'm researching right now. But just to give you a little bit of background, this is a book that is from about 1260. They've been able to um, verify the paper that it was written on and the ink. So the book excel itself we know is that old, but it talks about a story that goes back to um, the Great Flood and the destruction or the sinking of Outland. And in this, and actually in this book, it's really interesting. There's so many different parallels between, um, well, like Jesus here and, and through other um, saints and stuff throughout that are spoken about in this book and talk about the real stories. As you're listening to this, it is talking about, um, in this book, they talk about one God. There's only one God. They are monotheistic. They only worship one God, and they called him Wawondo, okay, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, he is the all God, the, the God that's above all, and he is all, all good. And also, it's talking about the three races of man, the yellow race, the black race, and the white race. And the yellow race is Finda, in here, the, the black race is uh, Lida or Linda. They'll use it Linda in this one. And the white race is Freya. So yeah, that's a bit of a guide. So let's take a listen. If this is the true story of Jesus, it's extremely fascinating. So let's give a listen. Sixteen hundred years ago, she writes, 593 BC, Atland was submerged, and at this time something happened which nobody had reckoned upon. In the heart of Finda's land, upon a mountain, lies a plain called Kasmir, Kashmir. That is extraordinary. There was a child born whose mother was the daughter of a king and whose father was a high priest. In order to hide the shame, they were obliged to renounce their own blood. Therefore, it was taken out of the town to poor people. As the boy grew up, nothing was concealed from him, so he did all in his power to acquire wisdom. His intellect was so great that he understood everything that he saw or heard. The people regarded him with respect, and the priests were afraid of his questions. When he was of full age, he went to his parents. Hard language. And to get rid of him, they gave him a quantity of jewels, but they dared not openly acknowledge him. Overcome with sorrow at the false shame of his parents, he wandered about. While traveling, he fell in with a Frisian sailor who was serving as a slave and who taught him our manners and customs. He bought the freedom of the slave, and they remained friends till death. Wherever he went, he taught the people not to tolerate rich men or priests, and that they must guard themselves against false shame, which everywhere did harm to love and charity. The earth, he said, bestowed her treasures on those who scratch her skin, so all are obliged to dig and plow and sow if they wish to reap. But no one is obliged to do anything for another unless it be out of good will. He taught that men should not seek in her bowels for gold or silver or precious stones, which occasion envy and destroy love. To embellish your wives and daughters, he said, the river offers her pear stream. No man is able to make ev everybody equally rich and happy but it is the duty of all men to make each other as equally rich and as happy as possible. Men should not despise any knowledge, but justice is the greatest knowledge that time can teach. 
because she wards off offenses and promotes love. His first name was Jesus, but the priests who hated him called him Fo, that is false. The people called him Krishna, that is shepherd, and his Frisian friend called him Buddha, purse, because he had in his head a treasure of wisdom and in his heart a treasure of love. At last he was obliged to flee from the wrath of the priest, but wherever he went his teaching had preceded him, whilst his enemies followed him like his shadow. When Jesus had thus traveled for twelve years, he died, but his friends preserved his teaching and spread it wherever they found listeners. What do you think the priest did then? That I must tell you, and you must give your best attention to it. Moreover, you must keep guard against their acts and their tricks with all the strength that Roalda has given you. While the doctrine of Jesus was thus spreading over the earth, the false priests went to the land of his birth to make his death known. They said they were his friends, and they pretended to show great sorrow by tearing their clothes and shaving their heads. They went to live in caves in the mountains, but in them they had hid all their treasures, and they made in them images of Jesus. They gave these statues to simple people, and at last they said that Jesus was a god, that he had declared this himself to them, and that all those who followed his doctrine should enter his kingdom hereafter, where all was joy and happiness. Because they knew that he was opposed to the rich, they announced everywhere that poverty, suffering, and humility were the door by which to enter into his kingdom, and that those who had suffered the most on earth should enjoy the greatest happiness there. Although they knew that Joseph had taught that men should regulate and control their passions, they taught that men should stifle their passions, and that the perfection of humanity consisted in being as unfeeling as the cold stones. In order to make the people believe that they did as they preached, they pretended to outward poverty, and that they had overcome all sensual feelings. They took no wives. But if any young girl had made a false step, it was quickly forgiven. The weak, they said, were to be assisted, and to save their souls men must give largely to the church. Acting in this way, they had wives and children without households, and were rich without working. But the people grew poorer and more miserable than they had ever been before. This doctrine, which requires the priest to possess no further knowledge than to speak deceitfully and to pretend to be pious while acting unjustly, spreads from east to west and will come to our land also. But when the priests fancy that they have entirely extinguished the light of Freya in Jesus, then shall all classes of men rise up who have quietly preserved the truth among themselves and have hidden it from the priests. They shall be of princely blood of priests, Slavonic and Freya's blood. They will make their light visible, so that all men shall see the truth. They shall cry woe to the acts of the princes and the priests. The princes who love the truth and justice shall separate themselves from the priests. Blood shall flow, but from it the people will gather new strength. Finda's folk shall contribute their industry to the common good, Linda's folk their strength, and we our wisdom. Then the false priest shall be swept away from the earth. Where all the spirit shall be invoked everywhere and always, the laws that Ra'alda in the beginning instilled into our consciences shall alone be listened to. There shall be neither princes, nor masters, nor rulers, except those chosen by the general voice. Then Freya shall rejoice, and the earth will only bestow her gifts on those who work. All this shall begin four thousand years after the submersion of Atland, and one thousand years later there shall exist no longer either priest or oppression. Della, 